on the way in. Mark Riley, BBC Six Music. An amazing record. I'm Mark Riley, and an amazing person, an amazing oh. journalist is Bob Hughes in Yorkshire. Hello, mate. Oh, too kind, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. We had a great session from Monday, Indiana, and um, yeah, all is well in the world. But David Bowie, it's no game, part one. Robert Fripp, mate. 
Oh, do you know, I was going to get to that. We're looking at sounds, by the way. 13th of September, 1980. you got Mishi Hirota there on the Japanese um, vocal. But Robert Fripp on there. I mean, throughout the whole Scary Monsters album, but particularly on there, it's just, I think the directive, we may have mentioned this before, the directive was, Bowie said to him, look, I want you to play a bit like Richie Blackmore. Obviously, he didn't mean that, but he meant your version of, or be in that space, you know, but do your thing. And, and this is what he came up with. I mean, the thing is, it's a great song. I love, I really, really love it. It's one of my favourite Bowie tunes. Mm. Um, but Robert Fripp's really wonky, off-kilter guitar just takes it to another place, doesn't it? It makes it, it extra special. And it's funny, isn't it? Because Robert Fripp, well, as I understand it, kind of took the Bowie empire uh, to task over his role in Heroes. And did mm. he win? I, I don't know whether he did, how it all kind of panned out. But it was such a massive it contribution to so many of Bowie's tunes. Oh, no doubt about it. And, you know, just people talk about non-Bowie uh, singles, you know, the album tracks, Station to Station and Candidate Sweet Thing, rightly. But also, It's No Game is right up there for me. It's just yeah. marvellous. It's a whopper. All right, news page here. Uh, let's see, we're looking at sounds. September 1980, the associates who've uh, come south for a tour are still looking for an inventive and sparse keyboard player. Ring Fiction Records on 01459-8681. Uh, so I know they had a couple of keyboard players later on, but I'm pretty sure Alan Rankin did it all himself at this point in time. It did he? Right. Later on. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, and of course, you know, talking to Bowie, of course, they got their deal with Fiction Records because they did an unsolicited cover of Boys Keep Swinging, didn't they? And and it, it got them noticed. Yeah, well, I was talking to my mate Blam just the other day and he told me that he's got a signed copy of the original release of the Boys Keep Swinging on the uh, on the small label. So, Ooh, yeah, tasty. Wonderful. Also in the news, Stiff Records are to risk their shirt and most of their nether linen on a massive UK tour, which they hope will yield them the same sort of star returns as their two previous Similar Ventures, the Son of Stiff Tour, featuring uh, Any Trouble, Joe King, Carrasco and the Crowns, Dirty Looks, The Equators, and a fifth act, which remains a mystery at present, is about to hit the road. Initial plans to send the whole gang of them around uh, around the country astride a, carama, uh, a caravan of camels has been scrapped. Instead, they'll be conveyed by a fleet of exotic charabangs. The tour starts in Leeds University on October the 1st. This was, uh, I suppose, the law of diminishing returns, wasn't it? You mm. had the original Stiff Tour, and the second one, which was all right and then here you know it's this wasn't a great success there's loads of tour dates listed here but it wasn't not many people went to see this you know you look at the original lineup from the stiff tour and it was just unbeatable wasn't it mm. it was just like you know all the all the kind of ducks were in a row everything just aligned for them and yeah. just a, an yeah. incredible array of musicians on that first tour and the second yeah. tour wasn't as good as the first one but it was better than the third one <laughs> it was yeah incidentally the mystery guest who turned out to be temple tudor right uh, uh, in the news as well, after exploiting disco with Saturday Night Fever and rock and roll with Grease, Robert Stigwood has now turned his attention to the new way for his next movie, Times Square, the film which deals with the life and hard times of two juvenile runaways cast adrift in New York's uh, Jungleville, says it will feature the music of Gary Newman, Roxy Music, Pretenders, XDC, Lou Reed, Talking Heads and so on. Uh, the film will be premiered in December. This was, uh, I mean, Stigwood obviously had his successes, of course. He was a huge, sort of a, one of the old-fashioned moguls, wasn't he? He got his mm. finger of many pies. But he, um, let's not forget, this is not long after he did the Sgt Pepper film, which was a massive flop. It was a stinker, that, wasn't it? Have you ever seen that? Do you know I haven't? No. No, nor um, have I. Yeah, I know Peter Frampton was a kind of starring role in that, and he was embarrassed. I remember him telling me a few years ago he was just embarrassed to see it mm. in the first place, you know, in the cinema. But uh, so Times Square wasn't a hit. This was a flop as well, although a massive favourite of uh, the Manic Street Preachers, who quoted some of the dialogue in the liner notes of Generation Terrorists. I'm sorry to bang on about Bowie again, but Bowie was commissioned to uh, provide a song for the soundtrack, but RCA wouldn't let him do it, apparently. Right, OK. I mean, yeah. it's something of a cult film, isn't it, Times Square? It is, yeah. It's become yeah. that over the years, yeah. Uh, John Len Lennon's back in the studio in New York after a lengthy retirement. He's rumoured to have signed to uh, Epic Records, although both the London and New York offices of the company were saying nothing this week. Uh, there's no news of when the album be will be released, but said to be two tracks written by Yoko Ono. Bear in mind, this is September 1980, of course, so it's pretty poignant, isn't it? Mm. Uh, and The Dam's forthcoming album, The Black Album, is due out next month. It's said to be something of a departure from the group's uh, punk origins being a double 
and containing a 15-minute track called Curtain Call. I mean, The Damned, nothing if not ambitious, but they always had that proggy element, didn't they? Because the second album was produced by Nick Mason. Yeah, and well, they wanted Sid Barrett, didn't they? They did. And they got Nick Mason, so not quite the same thing. But yeah, I mean, Captain Sensible was well into his prog, wasn't he? He was, hugely, yeah, that was it. Uh, and Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul, comes back to Britain after an eight-year absence to play six nights at London's Apollo Victoria. She'll be bringing over a 24-piece orchestra and a three-piece vocal backup band. She recently signed to Arista and released a new album called Aretha next week. Uh, she also makes a cameo appearance in the Blues Brothers film, which opens later this month as a cafe owner. This is probably, I mean, the Blues Brothers film, probably better known for all the cameos, wasn't it? James Brown, Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin. Yeah, again, another film that I've I've never seen. Oh, have you not seen it? No. Didn't it's that worth... just didn't fancy it? Is it good? It's it's all right. You didn't do a very good job of convincing me there. Sorry. I hadn't quite finished. <laughs> it's worth it for all the cameos. There's some really right. good performances in there. Okay. And uh, anyway, we should probably go to the indie charts, do you think? Well, you know, um, one of the most inventive bands around at that point in time was a Lilliput and Kleenex as was and I, yeah again I love this band and all the songs are really kind of blinking you'll miss them this is less than two minutes long Split <laughs> From Zurich, that was Lilliput and Split. I'm Mark Riley over here. Whilst over there, we've got Bobby Hughes. Indeed, looking at sounds here, the 2nd of... Um, no, it's the 18th of September, 1980. Uh, singles reviewed by Phil Sutcliffe here. He makes Jimi Hendrix's six singles pack, his single of the week, on the basis that he says he was an original genius. And uh, 10 years after his death, there must be loads of people who've still never heard of him, and they need to. Uh, there's also Mike Oldfield, Ozzy Osbourne, Jimmy Percy and the Cramps drug train. He says, uh, as a hardliner in these matters, if I thought Lux Interior was seriously urging us to get on the drug train, I'd disapprove. However, this is a prime cut of rock and roll in the original meaning of the phrase this week's best dance record uh, also keen on the special stereotype and their attempt to move away from this kind of scar image into some kind of spacey rumba he says with epic movie backup voices plinking mandolins and mexicali trumpets all played down beneath their boy next door vocals lyrically it either follows the ray davis tradition of british class structure satire or it's irritating snobbery oh it's a great tune it's fantastic it is uh, and the associates on page 19, each member, this is still early days, of course, 1980, each member gets to field a question. So there's drummer John Murphy and bassist Michael Dempsey. Then it's uh, Billy McKenzie's turn. He says here, I've always wanted to be a pop star. 
uh, because I always wanted to buy my auntie a carpet. She had this Indian carpet that was in the family for years. It was all threadbare. And then I saw, well, if you're, he thought, I thought, well, if you're a pop star and I've seen people like this on TV, you're able to give things to people you love, which is like as good a reason as any. It seems like he's almost got the same kind of mindset as Lawrence from yeah. Mozart Estate and Go-Kart. You know, it's like, oh yeah, just equating, <laughs> oh, like being a pop star, you get some money and do and buy something nice with it. You know, it's pretty sweet, isn't it? It is, yeah, that's just it. He does reveal as well, he comes from a really musical family, especially grandmother had the best voice around, so everybody would pile over to the, her house at weekends and sort of Fridays, Saturdays, sorry, Fridays through to Mondays, he said it'd be a one long party, everybody singing. And this is obviously where, you know, he got his um, sort of learning from and his talent as well, because he was obsessed with Billie Holiday from an early age. Well, he inherited it because he did have one of the best voices in the world at that time, didn't he? No doubt about it. Uh, Alan Rankin as well, he says here, uh, he says, um, very early on, he was playing in bands and he used to get pushed out to the side because he, he managed to pick up playing electric guitar so quickly that other people got jealous of him. Oh, right. So, and, yeah, and he, well, obviously he just took his, he could turn his hand to anything, wasn't he? He played so much stuff. Well, I mean, he was uh, he was crucial in the Stowe um, College setup, wasn't he, with Bella yeah. Sebastian bringing all That's those true. bands through as well. So, um, yeah, a, a wonderful musical talent. Yeah, absolutely. He says here, my guitar star. He was also a great tennis player. He got into junior Wimbledon, didn't he? And it was, so it was a bit of a choice between music and tennis at one point. I didn't know that. It was, yeah. When he was 13, he got into junior Wimbledon. He says, as for my guitar style, he says, I don't think I could ever uh, stand playing with another guitarist, like having two guitarists in the band. Uh, I don't play either rhythm or lead. It's just all intermingled. And there's lots of people who do that. But we want to make uh, break new ground, not so much for instruments, but for actual songs. We haven't even started yet. So wow. it's just that the genesis of something really special there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, new album front of your pretty things cross talk uh, by uh he says here, Pretty Things boss Phil May has been working on his vocal for around 20 years now, and this, the band's 751st rock comeback album, shows he's still got papers on most of today's new wave singers. Uh, sadly, though, he's the only member of this lineup. His creative talent is unarguable. It was a bit of a sort of um, fluid lineup at this point, wasn't it? Late 70s. Yeah, I don't know too much about him at that point in time. Uh, Dave McCulloch as well, very taken with Simple Minds, Empires and Dance, which he says, this is the album that uh, Roxy Music should have created to avoid the regressive ferryism process that soon blanded them all but out. Uh, and also around, we've got Entertainment by Gang of Four. Right, OK. We're going to play a tune now that I'm not aware of. This is called Naturals Not In It. Oh, it's great. Is it? Right, OK, yeah. great. Well, I'll enjoy it.
Gang of Four, Naturals not in it. Mark Riley, Bob Hughes, Parallel Universe. Yeah, looking at sounds, 18th September 1980. Uh, gigs this week, you've got Rory Gallagher at Preston Guildhall, Ramones at Rotters in Liverpool. Also at Rotters that week, Slade, supported by Joan Jett. You've got Dr Feelgood and the Specials all in a week. Uh, Steel Pulse, Gang of Four and the Mekons at the Rainbow in London, the Associates and the Moonlight Club in West Hampstead, uh, Marillion at the Red Lion in Bicester, uh, Screaming Lord Such at Summerland in Douglas on the Isle of Man, uh, Gary Newman at Bristol Hippodrome, U2 at the Taboo Club in Scarborough, XTC at Rotters in Doncaster, Pink Military at Rafters in Manchester, uh, Young Marble Giants at the Sword Hotel in Stirling, you've got TV personalities at the Craw Daddy in Croydon, Danny Gillespie at the New Golden Lion in London, Wanda Jackson at Southport Theatre, uh, and The Fall at Cleopatra's in Huddersfield. Do you, do you remember that one? Well, no, I don't. Uh, also, you've got uh, Echo and the Bunnymen, Modern English, Susie and the Banshees, and U2 at the second Futurama, uh, Futurama Festival at Queen's Hall in Leeds. Excuse me, ignorance here. So the fall weren't on this one. I know you were on the original one, weren't you? We're on the first one, yeah. And, it, and yeah. it's in the same place. So it's the old bus station in, in yeah, Leeds, isn't it? Right. I mean, yeah. just cavernous and, yeah, pretty kind of gritty, I would have to say, mm. but, but amazing. I mean, you look at the list of bands, you know, you've got Joy Division oh. and Echo and the Bunnymen and Hawkwind and Only Ones mm. and Public Image and all that. It's just, yeah, mind-blowing, Bill. Yes, absolutely staggering. So at this point, 1980, you've also got Dorothy Column, Clock DVA. Uh, right near the bottom of the bill, you've got Soft Cell. The story goes that John Peel was in uh, the audience and he Soft Cell passed him a copy of, of their EP and he started playing it on the radio and that's what got them sound to some bizarre in the right. end. Well, great. Uh, live reviews, Gary Newman at Manchester Apollo by Mick Middles. So this was the kind of kind of really scathing review that was soon forced Gary Newman to just stop touring. Apart from the fact he just didn't enjoy it. I think he said since he never felt comfortable on stage, especially in those days, and just felt like it was something that you had to do to pro- obviously to promote yourself. But he was that re- re- notoriously was it that review that pushed him over the edge kind of thing. I don't. It was just. I think it was just symptomatic. You know, emblematic of the kind of review he was getting at this time. And right. he's sort of mentioning the synthesizer and the fact that. Uh, it's all its scope and possibility has been repressed by the likes of Gary Newman and his gang of uh, se- session men, which is weird now, isn't it? Because obviously it's been, it's been proved to be so influential over the course of time. Gary yeah, Newman. I mean, like the industrial bands that came through and, and all of those, not just the synth bands, you know. So, um, yeah, yeah fair, fair, fair play to Gary Newman is what I will say. Absolutely, I agree with that too. And also Sylvie Simmons goes to see Devo in LA and doesn't like them either. Right, Devo are playing one of the festivals, aren't they, this year over here? Oh, are they? Yeah, I can't remember which oh. one. Bad boy. Right, okay, Bob, we got to go. We have. All right, mate, so um, enjoyed it thoroughly, as always. See you next week. Yeah, you All too. Right. And thanks to everybody involved in the programme tonight. We've got a bit of a rush on here, so we'll go. Giddy's next. Bye bye.
chasing home through the dark rainy night Fluorescent jam sandwich with flashing the light His mom's waiting up, she hopes he's alright But he's wrapped round a lamppost on Saturday night BBC Six Music. And shut the door on your way out.